And the Boocast synth of the month is the Korg Op 6. Korg describe it as the altered FM synthesizer and... It does all that and it also it, it can do a really nice organ sound. Because each of these operators in this algorithm are being heard, they're all carriers, you can treat these sliders as drawbars. do some rather nice uh, sort of emulations of real instruments so this is a pretty good one and continuing our little stroll through the presets we can find whoa, where is it it's got a built-in sequencer Gives a little inkling of some of the things it's capable of. It can do drum sounds. This isn't multi timbral, it's just very cleverly programmed to split the six operators across its keyboard. Although it's not multi-timbral, it does a nice thing where if you hold a chord, change the sound, you can sort of play over the top of it. And the last sound dies away nicely, it doesn't just cut, so it could be useful. So I haven't got very deep into this yet, as I said, I've only had it for a month, I've made a few sounds. That one. A couple of others we'll come to in a second. The reason I'm showing these presets is because I, I'm not very good at programming FM because uh, I'm human and it's useful to be able to give a vibe of this thing. But this isn't just an FM synth, this is altered FM as it says on the front and we've got different modes here. So there's a ring mod mode, so instead of frequency modulation we can modulate the amplitude which gives a different vibe. But here we have filter mode, so if I just choose an empty patch here, go to the algorithm, that's uh, well the wrong one. Just choose the one where we can hear everything. That one. For an FM synth, it's really very hands-on. So as you can see, we can... So all of these operators are to the same pitch and they're all doing sine waves at the moment. And as with FM, the tuning is controlled by this knob at the top, which gives us the ratio, which is a thing we use to give more harmonic uh, modulations. But if I just take this first operator here and we look at it, so let's go into... We're in FM mode, uh, we're using a sine wave. Now the first thing that's great about this is you're not stuck with sine waves like with the uh, traditional FM synthesis type thing. So we've got a sine wave here, we can change that to a 12-bit sine. A tiny bit of grit in there. 8-bit sign, triangle, a saw, square, a whole bunch of additive, white noise, pink noise, blue noise. So we're not stuck with the traditional sort of stuff here, so take a square wave, let's take the square HD. Because this isn't just uh, an oscillator, it's an operator, it also has an envelope attached to it. So we can do... But here's where it gets interesting for me, because I know nothing of FM, is we can go to the filter mode. Whoa. 
this is a great thing as well. If you make a mistake, just press no and it gets you out. So we go to filter mode. Just go back to the envelope. So in filter mode, a filter appears and here it is with resonance. Without showing you everything, basically what you can do because of this filter on its own, this just this one mode here, is you can give each of these individual operators different waveform, different filter settings, different envelopes. So you can produce, you could produce pretty huge sounding analog type sounds without having to get into the whole FM brain mangle of trying to work out what you're going to get. So there's all of these settings. So you can have frequency modulation setting, amplitude modulation, the filter, filter FM wave folder. And now there's a new effect mode for the operators where you can apply an effect to it. It's all much more uh, flexible. There's a whole, as you can see, a whole sort of thing opening out here. Like, whoa, hello, there's more to this than meets the eye. Combined with that, we've got the algorithms, which are the traditional FM algorithms. So with the algorithms, you get to choose which of the operators is going to be a modulator and a carrier, or in some cases, both. You can see from this picture what's going on. And you get sort of used to these pictures. The ones along the bottom are outputting and the ones on the top are modulating. But there's a user algorithm where you can set your own algorithm, deciding what's modulating and what's outputting uh, by yourself. So I didn't at first understand quite what this means. And it took uh, watching Oscillator Sync's video on the OP6 to understand what this means. And what this means, the fact that you can make your own user algorithm and you can choose between all of these modes of the operators is you can effectively build an entire synth architecture inside a preset where you can turn the OP6 into a Juno. It's a velocity sensitive Juno. The way these are set up here now is that we've got for so first of all there's some effects so we've got chorus so let's turn the chorus off so we've got the sawtooth the square wave which has pulse width modulation on it which we'll come to in a sec and a sub so Also got noise. Operator six is in it's in filter mode. It's oscillator mix is turned down. And we've got everything feeding into it, so that means operator six is a filter. We have control over here. We have control over resonance here. Operator 2 has pulse width modulation and that's controlled by this V patch here. So we'll just go through these. So pulse width, FM width, intensity. We can go all the way through zero. And just stop that. That's coming from LFO1, so we can change the frequency of LFO1. Pulse width modulation. As well as having envelopes on each of these individual operators, we've also got a final envelope over here, which I'll just find. In fact, no, we've got three envelopes. There we go on the final. So we can change the attack time. 
for the whole synth. It doesn't exactly sound like a a Juno synth, but it's just that this is such an easy way to make sounds. You just find your envelope and your filter and do all the usual the usual stuff. So yeah, pretty blown away. Also on Oscillator Sync's channel, he uh, shows how to make a sort of fake Buchler type of patch, which uses a lot of the LFOs modulating each other and it's almost like semi-modular is patching itself into itself. So you... It's like this, and if you can hear that, that's panning around the stereo field. If I do another one. Now these two keys are panning around the separate the stereo field separately from one another. Now three are panning around separately one another <laughs> the reason this is possible is because the three LFOs can each be set to be per voice which means for this up to 32 note polyphonic synth you've got an individual LFO per voice times three <laughs> So that's what, 32, 64, 96 LFOs in theory running simultaneously. Yeah, that's what I thought. So um, I've only made one sound. It kind of utilizes this. I'll just slow this down. So, so our filter is over here. So here is repeating that little phrase. That's the LFOs per voice, basically modulating the cutoff in time. So it's like we can play that. And when you consider that you can route these LFOs to just about anything. So if you, here we've just done it to the filter, but you can do it to the panning. You can also modulate the effects. So, I mean, for example, I'll just get a dry patch here. I sort of, I'll just go to the Juno. So on the Juno, we've got... What effects have we got? So we've got chorus as a mix control. Speed and the phase of the setting of the chorus, uh, spring reverb, so what I'm going to do is change this spring reverb to, and we've got 30 effects here from like chorus, unison, phaser, auto pan, flange, auto wah, a rotary speaker which we heard on the organ earlier, exciter, enhancer, three band EQ, distortion, guitar, limiter, compressor, some tape echo. Ah, let's have tape echo uh, without the... So I'll just bring up the tape echo. Bring up the feedback. that so there's this virtual patching region called v patch where you can choose an empty patch let's go for one so this is the oscillator sync preset and to be true to the original juno he's only used uh one lfo so we can see what's been used just lfo one 
So we're free to use another uh, LFO here. So let's take um, LFO2 and we can route it to FX2, tape delay. We've got level and delay. Okay, so this is delay time. So, I... so now we've got LFO2 messing with the delay time. So that's pretty extreme, even on the low, lowest apparent lowest setting. But if you press shift and adjust, you can get quite subtle types of modulation of your delay times. The LFOs have several waveforms we can choose from, so with triangle, Saw down, saw up, square, guitar, exponential triangle. I have no idea what some of these are, forgive me. But here we have something quite amazing. So there's step, random, level, and time. Select that one. If I go back to the V patch, It's a little bit over the top, isn't it? With that random step level and time setting, it's more than just a sample and hold type thing. It's also, as the name suggests, it's adjusting its time, timing. So you can get real instability into your sound. It's a little bit too much, actually. Let's just calm that down a bit. Way too far. So as you can hear, that's giving a sort of mangled tape effect. We can dial it down a little bit more. This is the kind of thing I bought the Strymon Volante for, to give you this sort of random messed up stuff. It could be a bit more subtle than this. And here it is, built into the Op6. That is completely over the top, actually. <laughs> I'll work out a way of fixing that at some stage. There's another thing you can do here, which is a control uh, here. So there's your intensity. Go straight from the LFO, straight to tape delay, delay time, bang. But in the middle, you've got a control feature, which allows you to choose. It basically passes the modulation through some control surface feature to the thing. So you can control when it happens. Such a simple way of visualizing it. There's your modulation, there's your source, there's your destination, and it goes through something to turn it up or turn it down. Really nice. So basically, this is the reason why this is a synth of the month for this month, because I'm in the weird position of I vaguely got the idea of what this thing is capable of, but my brain is almost un incapable of uh, coping with it. <laughs> it's just there's so much that's possible with this thing. I haven't really seen a synth like this before because, um, well, I have friends that do um, electron stuff and whatever, and, I've, and I also have friends that use modular all over the place, and they're constantly, constantly trying to drag me into that world. But this uh, is it's just in a, a little box with a keyboard. People complain about how light it seems to feel. I quite like it. It's, it's all right. And... Yeah, and the one thing that frightens me is, how's my brain going to keep up with it? It's got so many possibilities. Surely my my imagination is going to have to develop in some way. So I mean, there's I mean, if you're ever in that position and you're stuck and you can't think of what to do, there's something you can do. There's your initialized patch. Can't deal with working it out. Hit random, and it randomizes the whole thing. Sometimes you just can't, if you can't think of what to do, oh, it's pretty good for that kind of atmospheric stuff. Let's see what goes on here.
Anyway, there it is. A very, very brief, in no way in depth, just a quick overview of the Cool Gob 6. Uh, I'm, this synthism is quite amazing. There. 